Hey Gula Babes, Hipty Daisy here, professional OnlyFans creator and your favourite circus performer next door. Welcome to my channel. Today, we're tackling a topic that will make you think twice about dating in the digital age. How does being an OnlyFans creator impact romantic relationships? Today, I'll be spilling the tea on some of my own encounters, discussing some challenges, and debunking some common misconceptions. <laughs> it is such a common assumption for people to expect me to be like really horny all the time and constantly down to mm. I actually found it more so like backstage in the circus world. As soon as I started doing OnlyFans, people kind of expected me to be like more into like sexual jokes, like slapping my butt or like making moves on me. I've actually had some men get a little bit worried because they're like, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to keep up with you. I think they're scared that I'm gonna be some kind of sexual demon that just like pounces on them and eats them alive, which I feel like depends on the time of the month more than what I do for a living, if I'm honest. When I'm shooting a lot of solo content, my sex drive does go up because as I'm doing more, having more fun, I feel like my sexual energy just increases. So I just get into a habit of doing stuff every day. So obviously I'm gonna want it every day. So maybe that's kind of a true assumption. But when I'm shooting with people, especially when I'm doing really intense scenes where we're like pumping out loads of different angles and positions and crazy stuff, I do get like a little bit of a calm down. Um, um, especially if I'm doing kink scenes. So I'll get this thing called a sub down, which is when my, like, I basically just have a come down. I don't know how else to describe it. I get exhausted, I lose interest in sex. And then for like maybe three or four days up to a week, I might just want something wholesome, like cuddles. So yeah, shooting with other people does make me a little bit less interested in sex temporarily. <laughs> I actually haven't had a relationship where I've like regularly shot with men alongside being with a partner but I think I did have one and I just remember coming home and being like I just want purely wholesome energy I just want cuddles etc etc but the moment I saw him I just was so glad for a familiar face that I just want to go all out and just ended up like sleep like having sex all night so I say that I'll probably be less interested in sex because I'm tired but I think there's something really nice about coming back to your person and just being able to like reconnect with them sexually after a long day at work <laughs> no I mean, obviously there's gonna be a risk every time you have unprotected sex with someone, there's gonna be a risk, but I, I had a casual sex with someone who is not an OnlyFans creator and he didn't even know the process of getting tested. And I'm getting tested like once a month or if I'm shooting, it'll be even more. There was a period of time where I got tested two or three times a month because I'll be shooting, I have to test like two weeks before a shoot within a two week period. And then I have to wait two weeks after a shoot in case like, you know, anything develops and then I test again. I feel like as a sex worker who tests for my job, I'm more likely to be a safe partner than those who aren't professionals. But obviously there's still a risk. I can't ever go to a partner and be like, no, there's no risk you'll catch anything because this stuff happens just like it does with people who have casual sex and I don't know most people have unprotected sex right but I mean yeah if I'm doing loads of shoots in a row I, I do get burnt out and obviously even if I'm like psychologically there my body might need a bit of a break I've had it where I've like I don't know I've injured my body with some of the stuff that I've done to myself accidentally but I don't I don't think it's like a permanent state of sex exhaustion. I also don't shoot like super regularly. I think this is the joy of being an online content creator is you can just create the content and then because we get such a constant stream of fans, I'm able to just like send them the stuff that I have, which means I don't have to shoot as much as, I don't know, someone who's dancing in a club every night has to work. Like I might only shoot once a month, you know, but it'll be like one day of loads of stuff and then I'll have like a little rest for a couple of days and then I'm good to go, baby. <laughs> I obviously like, objectively speaking, I know that my body is attractive to look at, but if there's one thing I've learned from being an OnlyFans creator, it's that you are always gonna be someone's type. So in a way that has like given me some objective body confidence, but I've been with like a number of guys romantically who have <laughs> expressed surprise because they've been like, you literally post stuff online for a living. Like, why are you shy right now? Like, I feel like the vulnerability that you show in bed when you are with someone in real life is so different to the vulnerability online. Like I have so much control over what people see, I have control over what I put out, whereas when I'm in a bedroom with someone, it's a lot harder to hide things that I'm shy about. I have learned so much about my body since becoming a creator. Like a lot of my female friends who don't 
make content probably don't even masturbate that much. Or if they do, they're using like all these kind of different vibes and toys and crazy stuff. And don't get me wrong, I, I, there's a time and a place for a good vibe. But I've really had to take the time to explore my body, um, which I think has increased my kinkiness because I've, I've tried things that I probably wouldn't normally try. Like, uh, you know, I've, I've hired a dungeon with some of my creator friends and we've got to try all the different things. And, you know, if we're making a kinky scene, then it's like a safe space to experiment with something. So I am quite kinky. Yeah, I've actually had it with like at least three people, maybe two. No, at least three people who I've attempted to have a romantic relationship with have expressed um, anxiety over not being established in their career, over not earning loads of money. I've never really looked for financial stability in a partner because I've, even when I did circus, I was financially stable. Now I think it's a little bit worse because I have a lifestyle that I want to keep up. You know, I want to disappear to a different country and go and train or play or explore or shoot. Like I don't want to stay in one place for very long and many people aren't able to keep up with that and I think there's some insecurity around people not wanting me to pay and I'm getting better at convincing them to let me but if I'm like hey I want to go to this different country just come with me like I think people have a bit of a complex around allowing the woman to pay for things I also struggle to let men pay for me so I get it there's like a combo of things when it comes to the stigma multi facets of shame <laughs> I have been with partners who are scared to show their family my social media um, and obviously I have some like I don't know if I have shame around it I think I just am conscious of the fact that they could receive stick like I I'm comfortable in what I do my family knows what I do I'm very public about it so for me personally I'm like yeah but I'm also aware that not everyone holds the same values as me so I've had it where I've been dating someone and their friends have looked my content up and I, I find that a little bit odd <laughs> um, but obviously it's there for people to see, but it's the fact that their friends will like go and research my content and then come back to them and be like, you'll never guess what she posts online. And they're like, yeah, I know. And I think I have had it with one partner's dad who found my social media and then he's like, you know, I know what she does, right? And this is all good thing. I don't know. I just hope none of my partner's dads have ever subscribed because that would be really uncomfortable. Men are so down to date an OnlyFans creator when they think she just f other women for a living. They're like, great, I've always wanted a threesome. Obviously in it for themselves. Like, And, and that's genuinely something someone said to me. They're like, I wasn't okay with your job until, until I realized that I could actually get a threesome with you and now actually it is okay because I hadn't thought about how it could benefit me and now I've realized that it does benefit me I'm so supportive and then I tell him that I have sex with men as well and he's like oh I'm the only <laughs> in life babe my ideal relationship setup oh it's so hard because it changes so much um I think like the main thing that I want and I think really everybody wants and deserves is to have a partner who's like an active cheerleader in your life like to be like so supportive that they just want you to succeed and I want that I want to feel that way for my partner as well where I just want them to like yeah go do your thing be that successful person you were always supposed to be so I've previously been with someone who's like yeah sure I'm okay with it I don't support it but I'll deal with it and for me, that's kind of a deal breaker because what I do for a living is emotionally draining and it is hard to navigate and I can have some tough days at work. And then on top of that, adding the guilt of shooting, knowing that every time I shoot, my partner is dealing with it, it kind of sucks. So I'd really want someone who, obviously like we can't control how we feel, but as much as they're able to support me in what I do for a living, I think is really needed. I think we are trained by society and by modern belief systems that sex equals love, love equals sex, and you know, sex is something to be owned by our partners. Um, Reprogramming our brains to understand that there is separation is useful. I think I'd need to be with someone who's really, really, really secure in themselves. So that they understand that just because I sleep with other people for my work, that doesn't mean I love them any less or value them any less, or I love all the people I sleep with or that I'm gonna run away with one of my co-stars, which is a fun fantasy, but it's just never gonna happen. And you realize how strong the reality of that is when you get into a shoot and you're like this isn't romantic <laughs> like it's, of course you have your like tender moments and your intimate moments but it i'm not gonna fall in love with a co-star and leave them for my partner I might leave my partner for the 
co-star. Ultimately, I do think that being an OnlyFans creator has taught me so many insanely valuable skills when it comes to dating. So even though it's made the whole experience a little bit trickier, it's also streamlined the heck of it. Like I've really learned how to communicate things from the from the beginning, you know, communicating my boundaries, my desires, what I like, what I don't like, being able to create space for someone to be themselves as well, because I have to be comfortable with my insecurities. You know, I have to be able to navigate them well. So I do think that I've learned so much about communication and sex from a job, which, you know, when I meet someone who wants to join me on that, I think they'll be very lucky and I will too. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching my video on the worst parts of dating as an OnlyFans creator. If you want to hear about some of the best parts, be sure to comment below. And while we're here, check out my other videos. I've got so much fun stuff coming out. Mwah.